Hey everyone, how are we doing? My name is Tim Hongrose and this is Focus on Detail. Continuing on with the detailing of the family work unit, today is going to be all about the paint correction and paint protection stages. If you've been watching my previous videos related to this ute, you know that I'm tidying it right up going through different detailing processes along the way. Last time it was prepping the surface, getting ready for what's happening today, which is the paint correction and paint protection stages. The old saying cut and polish has come a long way, but the overall principle has remained the same commonly referred to now as a two-step or two-stage paint correction. When doing a two-stage correction, you'll need to find what combination works best for the occasion. Putting it really simple, you have your hard cutting compounds that progressively go up to lighter. That's where the term cut comes into it. You're taking off a very minute layer of the clear coat to remove such things as scratches, swirls and marring, just to name a few. Polishing is the refining stage, removing marks that can be left during compounding and giving the paintwork that final bit of correction. It's the same with compounds, polishes also go from a heavier cut to a lighter. This is all relative to the pads that you choose to use, and choosing the right pad can make a big difference with each stage, but usually how it goes is you have your pads that work in conjunction with the particular product. For example, you have your cutting pads that would work with your compound, you have your polishing pads that work with your polish, and then you have, finally, your finishing pads that usually get used to apply waxes and such. There are endless products out there that you can use, but for me today, what I'll be using is Shell Concepts S3 with Shine Mate's heaviest cutting pad, which is their green one, as well as Shell Concepts S20 with a Shine Mate blue pad to finish it off. I can't really tell you what's best to use, as it comes down to what you're used to, the condition of your paintwork, and how soft or hard it is. Now the car may look great after it's all corrected, but the thing is it needs to now be protected to help prevent from further damage and enhance the overall look of it. When it comes to the paint protection stage, you have your waxes, sealants and coatings that come in liquid spray and paste form. Again, endless amounts to choose from, but what I'll be going with is Colonite's 845, a hard wearing wax for a hard working car. I just tried to cram a massive job into several paragraphs, so I'm sorry if I'm a little vague, but I'll be going into more detail when I'm actually working on the ute, which will be happening right now. Previously, the ute received a complete paint decontamination to make sure it was super clean and set to be corrected. It was looking better, but desperately needed some more love. I'm using my older ShineMate EX610 DA polisher with a green ShineMate pad and Shaw Concepts S3. Both the pad and the compound will enable for a hard cut, which is exactly what this dry paint needs. After placing a few small drops over the pad, I press it over the area where I'm working. Then work it in with a low speed but moving quickly to spread it out. This will help prevent product sling. Once I'm content that it's evenly spread, I turn the speed up and my movements right down. While doing this, I'm working in a side by side and up and down motion, going over the surface several times, enabling for an adequate build up of heat which would help remove the defects. Rather than filling those scratches, we want to remove them, so it's important to take your time and be thorough. Now I'm keeping the pad flat on the surface with moderate pressure. Don't go landing on it with all your weight to speed up the process, as you could end up doing more damage to the paintwork from excessive heat. I'm quite happy using a dual action polisher. Although not working as fast as a rotary, it is safer. People always ask what do I recommend and I suggest a dual action ShineMate polisher. They're safe, affordable and great for beginners or even professional. You'll notice as well I've taped off areas that I don't want the compound getting into, such as over decals and rubber seals and plastics. If it hits them it can turn white and damage the plastics if left there. Now that I'd finished a section with the polisher, I'd grab my microfiber towel and give it a quick wipe down, then spray with CarPro's eraser, and then lastly wipe down again to ensure no residue from the compound was left behind. It seems to work a little better if you don't just spray eraser directly onto the leftover compound, rather wiping it off most of the product first. 
It's really important before moving on to continually be checking your work to see if you're getting the results you desire. This is usually done by going over the area with a light and judging it side by side. If you're not impressed, then you may need to go over it again or even mix up the combination of products and pads you're using. I'm happy with how it's looking, so I think it's safe to move on. I worked on just one side to see if I could get a good before and after shot, which can be tricky on white paint but because it was so dull, I was being optimistic that there'd be a noticeable difference even without using a torch. For areas that are a little hard to get to, I have my Shine Mate Mini Rotary that makes short work of fixing up those tight spots, and around badges, I'd use a cotton bud to clean it all up. I removed the tape and well, the results speak for themselves. It wasn't perfect as there were still some hefty deep scratches that would likely need wet sanding to remove them, but this was a serious improvement. Happy with the results, I kept going over the rest of the ute, continually checking my work to make sure the results were the same. Once the cutting stage was all complete, the car was looking a whole lot better but it was only going to improve even more once I started polishing to refine the paintwork. I'll be using my newer ShineMate EX610-21 polisher with a blue intermediate pad and Shoal Concepts S20. I'm using it because it's still going to be able to have a cutting ability, but can still be used to finish. It's one of my favourite products to use, as it achieves great results without having to do a complete cut and polish separately. But keep in mind, you'll always be able to achieve superior results from a separate compound and polish, purely because of the variety in different levels of cuts and finishes you can choose from. Polishing is the exact same in this regard as the cutting stage. All we're doing is removing marks such as marring that can be left behind from compounding and giving the paintwork that extra bit of glow. It was hard even with a torch to see a drastic difference on the white paint. The camera did have trouble picking it up, but it was certainly making an improvement. I'm awake with the flame in a hailstorm I'm back in, I gotta have it The polishing was now complete and all up this job has taken me around 6 hours so far. All that needs to be done now is to protect that very clean paintwork. As stated before, I'm using Colonite number 845 and if you're wanting a more thorough video about it, I've made one already and the link will be in the description. It was now easier to apply been having resting in hot water. I spread an even coating over every surface before then wiping it down after around 5 minutes. Low pile side to remove the majority and then the other plush side to buff to a nice slick finish. There is a lot involved in this but the results are worth it. We're removing damage that can be installed from poor washing techniques and just daily wear and tear, bringing back the car to look how it should. This old crummy ute was looking a whole lot better. It's got a shine back and even though white can be hard to really make stand out, I think this is an exception as it was looking so good. You guys know how I operate, I like to keep my videos short, sharp and sweet, but still keeping things informative. So hopefully I've helped you to get an idea of how to go about doing a two stage paint correction. Now that that's all done, those faded headlights really do stand out and not in a good way. Maybe the next video can be dedicated to them. That's it for this video, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out some of my other uploads.